Welcome to the Future Proofing Your School webinar. My name is Kim Edwards. I am, I'm your host here today. And so many schools are struggling with some really found fundamental information management challenges. For example, they've got multiple systems, spreadsheets, paper files, etc. And often the system that they're using wasn't originally designed for how it's currently being used. For example, it started as an accounting package and then sort of morphed into the teaching and learning. Schools are running costly on-prem servers and infrastructure. Is it in the cloud or is it not in the cloud? And the systems often don't fit their unique needs and they won't grow and change as they need to because they're quite big and cumbersome. And ultimately, from a school leader's perspective, and I'm an ex-school leader, there is a lack of visibility of student data. So if we look at one of the key problems behind this problem, and that's the area of records and systems management, because schools are grappling with multiple core systems and users. The data is often hard to see and find. It's, inf it's siloed across systems. The physical capture and storage of this data can often be a real challenge here. They, the two systems or the multiple systems aren't working together and compliance, depending on where you're located, if you're located in Australia, can be a real nightmare. And then it, they're not necessarily hugely secure in terms of that data. And so every year, Education Horizons undertakes a survey across all sectors, not just of all of our schools and users, but all school leaders, teachers, administrators, finance, business managers, IT, et cetera, over 500 participants in the last survey. And what the school management um, stream came out with was that 70% of them identified that maintaining accurate student records during their whole life cycle, future, current to past, is a real challenge for them. And that 47% of administrative staff wanted to improve data management of all of the student and staff records and saw that as a real priority. And I found this figure really surprising that 74% of schools were thinking of changing nine or more systems in the next year. And then you've got to consider the IT staff who are the ones that are having to integrate these systems. And that's their biggest concern, 77% of them. Now, within Education Horizons, we do a lot of research. And more recently, we undertook what we call a needs analysis uh, research and found, and this will be no surprise to school people on the call here, that we found that the number of integrated systems that a school tends to increase proportionally to the number of students. So the bigger the number of students, the more systems that a school is running. And often they're adding these systems because they're chasing features, but there's a lot of feature overlap. Like, am I meant to do it, this task in this system or this system, et cetera. And then the other key area, is it on-prem or is it in the cloud? And what does that actually mean? And when they're on-prem, for many of the on-prem ones, they don't necessarily work really well on different devices. And so on, they, they might work really well on laptops, but not other ones. Updates are manual, can be really disruptive and expensive. Schools have to buy the um, servers, they have to maintain that infrastructure and that costs money. And integrating with other systems can be a real issue. And then the $6 million question, which cloud? And what do we actually mean by cloud? Right, so is it that what we call, there are two versions, the lift and shift, so you take your current incumbent system and stick it up in the cloud. So you take all of the issues with it, or do you go cloud native and really leverage the power of the cloud? And backups on-prem can be a real issue here. And more 
more vulnerable to attack, etc. So if we then look at a little bit more of the research in this area, and this is certainly where we staff in Gartner Institute, um, said that as much as half of the spending across all the application software, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera will have shifted to the cloud by 2025. So up from 41% in 2022, and almost two thirds of the spending will be on application software via the cloud, which is really interesting. And then if we drill down, and we're going back to the Education Horizon Survey, the IT school leaders, and got them to identify what were the sorts of systems that were actually, they were using that were in the cloud. They talked about email, LMSs, student information systems. They might be running a CRM. They might have some form of curriculum content in there or teaching devices. So that was, and a lot of schools aren't aware that some of the systems they're running are actually already in the cloud. But then if we use the metaphor of an iceberg to really show the difference between on-prem and cloud. So on-prem, 9% of the costs come from the subscription fee, which is often in many systems an annual fee. And all of the costs, the big costs, 91% are under the surface. They're hidden. Whereas in cloud, 68% of the costs are coming from the subscription fee and 32% live under the waterline. So from on-prem, it's much more costly to set up. And then there are the huge costs, the hidden costs to maintain this, et cetera, on site. Whereas with the cloud one here, or what we call a software as a service, so it's a subscription fee. And what schools then do is they pay that fee and then the company manages the installation, the hosting and the maintaining of it. So it makes it a much better solution, not only from a school's perspective, but also from a company perspective, because it means that we can manage all of that side of it. And there are no hefty maintenance costs in terms of the school's infrastructure. And we do all the updates, there's no downtime, etc. So it makes it a much simpler process. And then if we just look, I think, at this quote from Annette Guru, which is talking about the need for your infrastructure to be able to scale really quickly and easily. So you think about report writing time. In a school, that is coming up this term. And so all of the teachers will be in that area of your software that puts a really heavy load on it. And often systems can really slow down. Whereas native cloud is built on this, what they call microservices architecture. The way I explain it, they're like separate little Lego pieces that connect and share that information. And what this means is that it can scale really quickly and makes it much more powerful. And Gartner also predicts that the demand for these integration capabilities and these agile work processes and architecture is really going to drive a very significant shift to the native cloud over the coming years. And so what does it actually mean? So there is a definition there. So if you think each attendance, wellbeing, finance, demographic, all of the parts that go into running a school. And each of these parts is running autonomously as a little microservice, and they're connected via APIs to make a much larger microservices base. But what that means is that they can scale, each block can scale to an almost infin infinite level of computing power. And why is this really important? It can scale, there's a much better data security through the use of these really secure APIs and security is a really huge top priority for any software as a service provider. There's a much, much faster development cycle 
and upgrades because it's all can be done on the separate components, etc. And it's got this common data schema, so it really supports that business intelligence reporting. And if we look at that from a diagram perspective, you can see I've got four of these micro or, or Lego blocks, as I call them. And as I add the add users, what you can see is that the um, microservices can scale easily, but they're still connecting and not causing problems um, anywhere else in the system. So that's the true power of microservices cloud native. And so that brings me to Zunia, which is our new product, cloud native SaaS microservices. It manages the student information, which is at its core, amazing uh, records and systems management, reporting, compliance, deep focus on well-being and engagement, open, secure integrations, huge number of APIs, really simple and easy to use, and it's built to grow and adapt. So one system that deals with all your teaching and learning and all of your business processes, et cetera, in one system here. It also has these APIs, these REST APIs. And what does that actually mean? So they're building, the team are building these out all the time. So it has the create, read and update and delete function. So for example, Zunia Connect is the parent data source. So it can be pushing the data out of Zunia into another system or it can be acting as the child data source and sucking that data back in. It might be updating data, et cetera, creating records and so on. So it has that two-way process. So let's have a look at Zunia. So the first thing is that Zunia is what we call mobile responsive. So Zunia will fit in the pocket of the teachers. They can have it on their laptop, their iPad, and they can have it on their phone. So they can actually have this system with them 24-7. So imagine if they're out on yard duty and they can be checking, they can be adding wellbeing notes, they can be dropping in medical incidents, they can be checking, etc. Or they're out on an excursion or somewhere and now they don't need to print lists. They don't need to have any of it. They can take their attendance drop in if there's been behaviour issues, check the medical, they've got mum and dad's contacts, et cetera, and it's really seamless and easy to use. So that's what it looks like on the mobile. It also has a really big finance component, but I'm, because this is a webinar, I'm just gonna show you conceptually at a high level here. So if we think about the Zunia as the, the source of truth for the student information. And so Zunia has got that package part and then think about Xero or Myop, et cetera, and connecting through to a school's main finance system. So at the heart of Zunia sits this relational database where every person in the community has a unique ID. And why is that important? That's really important to manage the complex family structures and payment structures that sit within every school. And that can be managed from within Zunia. So schools will be able to do all their billing, run their um, billing payments and issue refunds, re receipting, et cetera. So they'll do everything in there that relates to the student and charges. And that will go into the sales ledger. And then that can then be pushed through into, for example, Xero and Myop. So schools will still run their full accounting packages and that's where their full general ledger will be. But those transactions that relate to the student will go into, for example, a Xero sales ledger, those transactions get posted there. And that will make it a much simpler and easier process for the schools to manage. 
Now that integration with both Ciro and Myop is coming at the end of this year. At the moment, schools can still do it. There's a CSV export, so it's working and those systems are there and we have schools using the finance component. And then the same process that I've just explained, if the schools that aren't running, Zero and Myop, then for example, QuickBooks or any other financial system, the same principles apply. They determine their fees and charges, they do a billing run, there's this electronic payment gateway, it's Fat Zebra and Stripe is coming, and that will then push the information into um, Zunia, but also into the school's financial system that they're running. So that's that overview. Now, if I just come out of this and if I come into Zunia here, so here it is, cloud native, that I'm just going to stop that share and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to reshare my screen. So now you should be able to see that screen there. So this is Zunia. I've logged in as Kim Edwards. So this is my dashboard. So the first thing that you'll see here is that I've set it up for myself. I can edit this. And for example, I want birthdays to come in here. I can get rid of accessing help. I don't want that. And I can have that there. And instantly I can say I've set myself tasks. Reminds me, if I've got students in my class, their birthdays, something that's really important, got access to my timetable, etc. So that's my home screen. In terms of navigation, this is the main navigation panel. And I can pin it and I can unpin it. I'm just going to pin it there and then I can expand and collapse. That's it. But very, very simple. And then over here, I have this toolbar and that's always there. And there's some really key functions from a school's perspective that they're going to be going in and out in this area. The other thing is I showed you on the mobile about it being mobile responsive. And so this is all teachers will do. They'll go in on their phone, log into Zunia, but it will respond or I come in on my iPad a lot of primary teachers are running those or I resize it here for my um, laptop. Now, first thing I want to be able to do is find out information on students. And so this is what we call the quick access panel. So a lot of Zunia has been built on the huge intelligence and experience that Education Horizons has had within the synergetic and sector arena. And this quick access panel is the equivalent to the student information panel in sector. So here's my student, Jacqueline Abbott, and you can see we've got the photos. She has a number of alerts. Now these alerts travel with the child. So wherever her name appears, these alerts are there. And this is this really critical information about a student that every teacher needs to know. For example, court custody orders and serious medical issues. And you can see that Jacqueline has a number of these issues here. The other thing I also get access to is information. As a teacher, I can quickly communicate with mum and dad. So I can view, I can come here and I've got multiple ways I can contact them. I can view her timetable. I can get additional information that I need to know as a teacher and I still haven't left my home screen. I can get additional medical information, et cetera. And all of that is always available. I just determine if I want to view it. So I'm just gonna shut that there. If we look at it from a school information management system, Another key area within Zunia, and I've been talking about this unique ID, is this student profiles. So Zunia manages the whole student life cycle from future to current to past students. So if I just click on current and I just do a quick search there, 
my students are appearing here and the photos are also loading. And I'm going to choose Jacqueline here. There is an alert here. Oops, just doing something a bit weird. Let me just refresh my screen here. And there we go. I'm just going to get rid of that. I'll go understand. I don't know what that was. So now there's a lot of information that can be captured on every student. And you'll be pleased to know I'm not going through all of this. The key one here is the relationships. So this shows me all the people in Jacqueline's household who are associated with her. And then down here, uh, these people again, but with their unique ID. So this is the part that means we can manage any family arrangement because of this unique ID here. And then if we take those same principles and you can see if I shot student profiles, there's staff and there's community. And if I click on community members, and here is Bashir Abbott. So this is Jacqueline's dad. And I again, I can see there is a lot of information here that I can capture, similar but different on each of the parents. I can be documenting checks. You might be having their vaccination status if that's still an issue, et cetera. And it also keeps a correspondence log. So within this area, everything that relates to Bashir's children will appear and can be managed from this actual area here. So this is this whole information system that is at the heart of Zunia. And if I come back out of that, and I'm now going to put my teacher's hat on and I'm going to come here to timetable, here it is, and this is my timetable. So to take attendance, it's as simple as clicking on the timetable, hitting attendance, and there it is. Here's Jacqueline. So she was the student I just showed you. Here are the alerts. And I've come to today. And the green column reminds me as a teacher, this is the date you're meant to be marking, et cetera, and the period. And it's as simple as clicking present, one click absent, two clicks late, and Zunia tracks minute by minute here. And then I can be tracking this historical. It takes a moment to load and it will be pulling that information up. There it goes and it starts to load. So if a child's coming in nine minutes late, then that will be flagged in here. So a lot of information available from this attendance screen. But if I just take that off for the moment and I come back here, I also get this longitudinal view. So not just one day and I can't remind myself, have they missed all my lessons for the last week or so? I have that information here and available to me at my fingertips. Now, after I've taken my attendance, I've got my kids working. The next thing I always want to do, and many teachers want to do, is I want to go in and drop in a wellbeing record. And if you notice, I haven't left the screen, quick access panel, and I've now come to wellbeing. And now I can type in great result, Jacqueline, there. Better put a capital with her name. Schools can set up their wellbeing categories. So this is completely up to them how they want to organise their wellbeing. I'm going to make this a positive. You can backdate it or whatever, and then I'm going to click save. So in less than 60 seconds, I can take my attendance, drop in a wellbeing note, and for me, then I can get on and do my teaching. Where does that note go? It comes into this area called student well-being and if I go to view well-being records I'm just going to save what I've done there and if I go select all now I want to go back in time pretty quick and this time I want to 
come to Jacqueline. If you notice, it's incredibly fast and responsive. And now, so as an ex-school leader, having this information when mum and dad come in perhaps less than happy that I can access it really quickly and then have what I would call evidence-based discussions is really important. And now you can see it's all been colour coded so I can view that. If I want to add a comment here as a, let's say I was a principal, then I could add that an additional commentary to each of these records. And obviously this will grow and build over time. So it's showing you we can capture the information and then view it and to be able to communicate and have those informed conversations. And then from a teacher's perspective, it, whole health and medical. So remember, they can have it in their pocket. And if something happens out there, now I'm just going to choose Jacqueline here. And I want to add in a medical incident. Now, these are all these lookup tables. Schools can add it right, really personalised for your context. So let's say that this happened in a sports centre. Right, I can add in going to make it Peter type of incident again, all of these. Let's give her an abrasion and let's come here to this map and I want to edit that. Oh, I don't want to do that. Let's give her here and I want to remove that one. All right, I'll just take that out and I'm going to save that. Now, if I want, I can then communicate with people or the whole, or she can be sent off to the school nurse. But the initial data capture can be dropped in. And obviously there's a big permissions matrix that sits behind this. I've got the full suite here, but you can see here that there can be a lot of medical information captured on students. And from a school's nurse's perspective, they can manage the whole incident life cycle from this area. And I can be tracking their, I'll just save that, and I can be tracking all of their immunizations, their allergies, their medical conditions, their consents, et cetera, et cetera. So that is available. And the teachers get access to the bits that they need to do their job. The other really great bit that was brought in last year was, as we know, schools are uh, drowning in medication. Who's what oversight do they have? When is it expiring? Is it out of stock? And because it's been put in and it's there, then they can be tracking medication that's expired, about to expire, etc. Where is this located? That's the six million dollar question. And then if they need a refill they can contact and request that there is a refill provided, et cetera. So very simple and easy to manage that whole medical component. And then the final thing from a teacher's perspective is this, I'm back up here in the toolbar area, is this reports area. Because teachers are always wanting to print lists and extract stuff from a system. So if I'm just coming to school management, I'm going to students. So there are all these ready-made reports set up here for teachers to come into. And you can see I've only come to one area. So let's say it's an excursion contact list. I mean, in a way, they don't really, they, they don't need to be printing this, but let's say they're a teacher that wants to print this. So I want to print it for the whole of year seven. I'm just going to run that report and it's running in the background. Very simple, but I've already achieved it. So here is the information. Now, because this is a demo system, we don't have all the medical in there at the moment, but you can see I've got the pictures, I've got the student information and I can pull that down and print it. I don't have to go to the front office and ask someone very nicely to do it for me because that is available within the system. Now, I'm just going to take my teacher's hat off because I'm pretty much covered. I'm going to come to the marks book in a moment and I'm going to go and put my ex-school leader's hat on and let's talk about compliance. 
which is every um, school leaders, you know, so many compliance reports are required. Now, what the team did was they really looked at all of the state and federal regulations. And rather than create individual compliance reports, what they've done is they've been able to identify across all of the compliance reports, the key values that are the same. So what does that mean for a school? This is where schools map once and never touch it again. And then those values can be sucked into multiple reports. So if I come to the Australian government, you can see here I'm on education level. This is Zunia. So this is, for example, how a school set it up. They've called it senior kindy and prep. Another school might just be kindy, et cetera. And the Australian government requires these codes. So the codes are already all in there and schools map once and that's all they have to do and save. So once that mapping is done, all the school leaders will do is come to their state. So let me just choose Victoria for the moment and they can see the compliance reports. And these are constantly being added to. So let's do student residential address collection. That was all done in February. Now we can see where is the data being pulled from? You can see these three fields. So it's coming from these three here. And how easy is it to do? It's as simple as click export, choose your campus. Now I could put in the whole school here, but for the purpose of this demo, I'm just choosing one year level and I'm going to go export. That's it because the data is already in the system. And then what that will do is in a moment, it will send me a message up here to tell me it's all ready to go. And then I download it. And so here is the spreadsheet that you can see on the screen. Everything is there ready to upload to the data hub. So I jobs that can often take school leaders hours and hours and hours and hours is there and can be done in one run. And the other brilliant part is it tells you if there are issues. So I deliberately went, ran one before so that I would get some warnings. And it's saying that these students, currently there's a problem with their address and where they're residing because this relates to Australian students. And then it gives you more detail down here. So that is all within the system to really make it seamless and easy for school leaders. The other part that was really only enabled in January this year was this export tool. So it's telling me that I'm coming into an area where we can get access to people's personal information. So clearly permissions sit around this. And I'm going to select agree. And now, if I come to students, here are my, you know, almost 1200 students. So I'm just going to click and select a few students here. And I want to map <coughs> some of the key data. And then I'm going to submit that there to be exported. Same process. It will send me a message eventually when it's done to say that that information is now available and I can download it. So in a spreadsheet, exactly very similar in a way to this report, but this exporting data sits within the um, profile area that you can extract from any of these fields that are appearing within the student area, future, past, and staff area. So another way to get access to that individual data. Now, final part is the academic reporting. So up here is academic reporting. So the first thing is schools will set up their reports. So this is where the leaders are. They'll assign them really, really simple and easy. 
Now, normally in a school, school do um, reports are done in sequence. The teachers do their bit and they've got a deadline and then they pass them off to the school leaders, they proof, et cetera, then they go back down. So it's a bit of a tennis match, but it's, and so that extends the timeline. What they've done in Zunia now is that it can be managed in parallel with the teachers and the school leaders doing stuff at the same time. So I've come in 2023 term two, I'm just gonna make myself a bit bigger. I've come to a year five English class here and I've already got it loaded. And if I click all, you can see as a teacher, I can now go, and, okay, I only want to look at incomplete. So I can then filter down from here. And gray means I haven't started. It's telling me there are four parts to Adney's report that I need to do. Anna, it shows one of these I've marked ready for review. Two are in progress. I haven't released them to my leader. One I haven't started. So I can be releasing sections of a report to a leader to review and Chad is completely done. So from a school leader's perspective, they function in manage reports here. So I'm coming to all the incompletes or let's say I just want to look at ready for review. Here's Anna. So if I click on Anna here, it brings me in straight to this one, which is, I, as the teacher said, I'm happy for you now to look at my report. So I can come down, make sure they filled in all of the boxes and templates. And obviously schools can set grids, they can have, you know, scales, they can have, you know, percentages. It's completely up to a school. Check the comment. Yes, I'm happy with that. And then I can mark that as complete, done, proofed, etc. And then if I want, I can come and look at they're currently where they're up to. So this, the teacher has not yet marked ready for review. So the key thing with academic reports is that they can be managed in parallel, not in sequence. And then the final part of this is if I go completed reports, now I can see that one has been fully completed here. And then I can come down here and I can actually view that report. And here it is. So, you know, this is just an example where they set it up with a table, etc., to capture that information or can be printed any other way, um, depending on how they want to share that information with their parents and their students. Now I did talk about the finance system and, and I did do that high level. This is the whole area where it is managed, debtor accounts are set up, bulk billing runs are applied, student charges are applied, that flows through can manage like the 50, 50, 70, 30 monthly plan, dad's paying monthly, mum's paying term or yearly, and they're doing, doing different payment methods. It has that ability to manage all of that side of it. And then finally, if I come to the developer portal, which is this whole API area, so this is freely available, our ecosystem team uh, working with outside companies in terms of accessing and using our APIs. And here they all are and with the details. Now, obviously schools would need an actual person on their IT stuff. We don't require that. Education Horizons over time will keep adding those partners that have got an API with us. And that's certainly going to continue to be a work in progress. But what it's going to mean from schools is that you can get the best of breed. For example, you want to link to consent to go, the excursion management or seesaw, et cetera. Then you can have Zunia as this core information platform, cloud native, 
all of the benefits of that and then link with APIs. And then finally, I just want to mention some exciting new developments in terms of what's coming this year, what's about to drop, what has dropped. So in terms of what's coming, the school app and learning plans, I'll show you the Mark's book, Teams and Google, really exciting, wellbeing uplift, multilingual, they know they need to do, it, it will come, not on the roadmap this year, and Edvale is now integrated, etc. And I'll talk a little bit more about the finance system general ledger. So what does it mean from a school, a parent app? Every school asks, do you have an a parent app? Well, we will. So we're developing our own and it's going to be called the school app. So there's a lot of work being done in this area. And the first available will be for the parents and that's coming in at the start of December. Then students next year. So one app, obviously different permissions and what they'll see will be slightly different. And it's got some really core cool foundations, incredibly secure. Schools will put their own branding on. They can view the app in their web, in their web browser if they want to. And it's got all of that information that parents need to be informed about their child. And what are some of the key functions? So this is December. They can receive notifications, et cetera. I'm not gonna read all of these. Consents are really important. Update contact details. They've got some two-way messaging, view their payment information, et cetera. So, and they will continue to add to the functionality after December, clearly from a parent's perspective, but that's what will be available. In terms of timetable integrations, particularly if you're a bigger school, Edval is now currently available. So that huge timetabling system is um, schools can now link that and sync their timetable over. ASC timetables in October, Keith Johnson, January next week, and timetabler July 2024. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how these timetabling integrations are going to be managed. Now, in terms of, I haven't touched on academic planning because there is Mark's book version one. And what the team then decided to do was actually, this is a fabulous Mark's book, but we can make it even better. So this is the current Mark's book in Zunia. I'm just showing this to you as a video. So this is early years. You can see you've got emojis, you've got colours, and they're really run it as a running record. This is an example of year five, numbers, emojis. There's also scale in there, which is really important. Letters, so from an early years to an upper primary, et cetera, to more of a secondary here, which is, you know, straight summative assessment. So that's what's currently available. And what the team are doing, and it will land in our system tomorrow, not today, is they've created this academic planning area. And one page, teachers will be able to take attendance, enter wellbeing, communicate with mum and dad and the kids. And the new uplift for the Marks book, which is really exciting, will come at the start of June, which is really only weeks away. And why is it important that this piece has been added? Well, what they've done and they've realised is that the timetable was where you had to go to access your marks book and attendance. And everyone's running co-curricular or additional groups that sit outside the normal academic timetable. So what they've done is they've decoupled all of this, marks, book, attendance, et cetera, from the timetable. So the timetable's there. That's really important to get to the right lesson on the right day and the right period. But the academic planning will work independently. So if I want to 
set up a hockey club or an after hours tutoring thing. I can do that because it means I get all the attendance and I get the additional part of a place to put some information. So what's it going to look like? It's landing tomorrow. You can easily communicate with parents and students. So here it is, email, SMS. If that's how you've set it up, it's completely up to the school. And then these are the functions. So from tomorrow, we'll be able to do attendance and wellbeing. The marks book or grade book is coming in about um, three weeks. And that will be where you will be able to enter all of that key information. So as a teacher, I just have one place. I don't go anywhere else. It's all here. Make sure I get to class on time and everything else is here. And then from what, why the marks book uplift? Well, you can see it looks the same. And, but we've got the traditional academic, right? The summative, whatever. But every teacher is running additional spreadsheets. You know, those ad hoc on the fly, I want to capture this information. That's what this uplift is giving us. And you can see under that teacher assessments, add a column. I don't go anywhere else. Stay here, quickly add a drop in the information I want. And whether you're curricular or co-curricular, then you get this ability. The other thing that we're also doing in this uplift is that every grading scale will now have a numeric scale associated with it. So what this means is schools will be able to now do those cohort statistical analyses and that long-term reporting of progress over time. So you can have endless emojis and star ratings, but hidden behind it is a number calculation, which every school requires. The next part is the teams. Part one is working in Zunia, and I'll explain what that means. Google, we're all done from our end. We're just waiting for Google to give us the key, the key, and that will be landing also for Google Classroom. So two really global systems will be are available, and well, Teams is available. Google is. We're just waiting for them. What does that mean from a school's perspective? So this is a simple graphic, and this is what we call part one. So Zunia on the left-hand side. So we've got the student information. So Microsoft School Data Sync will pull the users, the classes, and the enrollments, and it will pull it every 12 hours. So if you've got a new student that lands in your class the next day, then that child will be pulled into the Microsoft area. So it's pulling it every 12 hours. And then it's pushing that into Teams, the users, the classes, and the enrollment. And that's where those classes will be set up, et cetera. So part one is taking the data from Zunia and pulling it and setting it up in Teams. Part two, that will be coming soon will be the integration back into Zunia. So stuff is done in Teams and then you wanna flow back into Zunia. That's the next part of this development piece. Now, I mentioned MyOB and Zero. that integration start of December. In the meantime, CSV export, we have wellbeing in our system. However, they're adding a lot of additional functionality and that's going to be available from the start of October. And le individual learning plans, that $6 million question, that's going to be available from January 2024. So really not probably seven months away that that will be added because that's another key piece that schools require. So hopefully that's given you a really good overview of Zunia, where we're up to in terms of cloud, new product, best, all that intelligence from sector and synergetic, 
bringing it in here and I really appreciate you taking the time to attend today's webinar. So thank you very much. Please reach out to our team if you have any questions. Thank you.